Hello everybody, my name is Jay, for those who don't know me, um, I'm a professional poker player and I'm also a poker coach based in London. Um, please check my website poker-coach.net poker If you want more information you'll find everything you need there. Um, so today we're gonna review the third and last part of our heads up match we've started against Malu. If it's the third part this means that there are two previous parts that you should see. I strongly recommend that you watch it um, before watching this part, this third and last part. Uh, a brief summary, we've been dominating our opponent, our opponent. Mm. He's got hugely, huge leaks, he's 3 betting way too much before the flop. Um, and yeah, I think he's very close to the tilt zone and we're gonna try to provoke this tilt. Um, what else? He's a bit calling station and yeah, he, he's... well, it's pretty easy to, to beat him actually. So we're not going to to take too much risk and yeah we're gonna push in we're gonna push him to the to the tilt let's go jack nine we open e three bets e three betting almost fifty percent of his range as I wrote it he feels bad I, I think my opponent's state of mind is this one is is he feels pain, he feels he's been he, 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 I think his head is burning he's a, he's a professional player he, because he, he's a regular player and uh, he's losing so he I guess he doesn't like it so here um, I defended Jack-9 uh, facing his 3-bet as we said, he's rebating 50% of his range, so this means that he can have any pair, any, well, almost any two cards. He doesn't see bet on this flop, ace 9 4. I guess he would have see bet um, with any ace. But well, I check back um, because. Uh, well, I check back because I don't want to be check raised, and maybe I could have mm, bet the flop. Uh, the turn comes an ace, so my hand now is, seems pretty good because uh, I've got the pair of nines. And well, I bet the turn, he calls, and now I bet the river because I still think that I've got the best hand and. I bet only half pot um, because I want him to call even maybe with king high with a pair of any pair under the nine pair of eights pair of sixes pair of but I think yeah he ends up folding Queen seven. We don't need to defend it. He's gonna tilt. What I write in the, in the chat is um, what I feel during the um, during the match. It's useful because sometimes you you don't feel the things in the same way when you review the video or when you play it. So yeah, I, I felt like he, he was going to tilt. I check back my king high. Sometimes I've got the best hand, but on this flop, queen ten nine. Mm, C betting, I'm not sure. It could be a good idea versus this kind of open. He would have check called me with a lot of his hands, and I don't want to three barrel him with nothing as a bluff because he's a calling station. I continue opening almost 
any of my cards, any of my holdings, because I want to play hands versus him, and I continue min raising, open min raising, before the flop, because he's three betting a lot, and I don't want to give him a risk reward ratio hmm, too too interesting, too too good for him. Ace queen. I three bet for value because my hand is good. He folds. As I said during the second part, uh, I feel like I'm dominating this opponent, and I he is he doesn't adjust. He doesn't adapt his game. Here I see bet with my gut shot plus one over card, which is the ace. I've backed off flush draw, so I, I continue, I second barrel. And he check raises, so against this kind of opponent, I I don't need to 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 take too much risk. I mean, uh, I could against another opponent there. I could um, shove here or four bet. I could four bet him. Mm, if he bets ninety four, I could bet something like two hundred seventy, and of course call him. Um, call the the call the shove if he shoves because there would only be something like 150 behind, so that would be a call, of course, because I've got the odds. Um, yeah, but here I only have to pay 64 euros to see the river. Uh, the pot is 164 euros here. So my odds are almost mm, two and a half to one, and I think I still have implied odds because um, because he's a calling station and he will call me if another club comes here. So I think calling is okay, and now. The deuce, which is a bad card because pff, it's. I can't bluff him. I mean, with this card, I can't bluff him. He can have. He can have the flush. He can have the full house. If he's got, for example, a pair of eights. Um, I. No, I. I think in. Against some other opponents. Uh, I might want to bluff and re-raise him as a bluff, re-raise him all in. But well, first I don't represent much, I represent the flush. And that's all. Yeah, maybe I might have a full house, but I'm opening all my, all my hands, so my range is pretty wide here. And I mean, I'm opening before the flop. I'm opening any two cards against against him, so my range is very very wide. Um, and most of all, what I want to say is that against this opponent, uh, which I'm dominating pretty easily, I don't need to take risks. That's why here I won't try to bluff him and re-raise him all in. Whereas uh, against other kind of opponents, uh, I might try to do so. Nine seven, I defend, calling before the flop. Yeah, and I said that I was not happy with this call. Better to three bet him to polarize my three bet range. Ten deuce, no need to open. It's very, very weak. Check nine. I 
hand I get two of the cards and a gut shot I, don't, I would have tried something if you had see bet now the queen comes and I still have my gut shot plus two good cards I think if I hit a, a nine or a jack so I bet because I have no showdown value with my jack high and I'm glad to steal the pot during the match so I write why not over but hingy um, yeah I think I'm I, I might overbet him but for value and I have to keep in mind that during the match during the f two previous videos uh, when I when I forbet him uh, when I sorry when I overbet him because that's what we're talking about here overbet uh, when I over overbet him earlier he is never called us is folded always so I have the, the momentum at the moment I'm dominating him so I have to I mean there's no need to to overbet him as a bluff I think he's a bit tilty he's a calling station if I overbet him and he, he wins a, a big pot this will help him um, this will help him play well and I want him to to continue playing poorly and and steaming and and spewing <laughs> it's the here is the process you play bad you start steaming well you play bad so you lose parts so you start steaming so you get close to the tilt zone and so you start tilting and spewing and yeah I think he's on this way 6-4 I open he defends by calling I'm gonna see that because I've got nothing and I can't win this pot if I check back no need to see bet mm. a big size here once he's called I don't want to try to bluff him outplay him I've got nothing this 10 doesn't change anything this 10 is good for him because he, now we can have two pairs like 10 nine it was a bad flop and it was a bad turn so I didn't want to second barrel him I abandoned I see bet because I have top pair it's a drawy board protection etc it check raise me we've seen earlier that he could check raise with anything this 4 is not a great card for us because he could have 7 file I'm gonna bet because if he's got a 5 or a draw I want to protect my hand my plan here was to bet big on the turn and maybe check back the river because there would be a lot of scary river cards with the many draws on the board jack 10 I defend I've got a get shot I check and call now it checks back the turn because that would be a bad turn to bluff for him and I represent either an ace or a king so I think he's got nothing and he abandoned on the turn I bet because I, even if I'm gonna pause it right now even if 
the um, I had jack high and maybe I had shodan value on this board ace king juice juice eight uh, I don't want to be beat by an ace a river ace uh, an eight sorry an eight if he's got a random eight in his hand or maybe a pair of I don't know a pair of threes fours fives any little pocket pair I didn't want to lose against this type of hand so it's better to turn my hand into a bluff at the river bet and take the pot Ace two side check back the flop I bet the turn because I've got top pair a weak top pair and it folds Five views, very bad hand, no need to open that. I'm opening 91% of my hands, but yeah, the night percent I fold are hands like five views, ten views, seven views of suit. I think any any suited hand against him I would open it. Jack Jews three bets it's a fold of course check this again no need to defend that king seven we open it We want cards. Come on, guys. Come on, Paddy Power, please. Give us cards. 9 4 suited. So it's good for a raise. My open bet size was a bit higher. I've tried to to open with uh, yeah, a better bet size. What I said during the second part of this video is that I made two mistakes during this match. First, I didn't change my I have not changed my um my bet size my open bet size enough uh when we're playing deeper we want to open for with a deeper uh, with a, a higher bet size if you're playing 200 pink blinds deep which is not our case right now we're playing 150 but if you're playing 200 big blind deep which was the case during the second part you want to open for example three big blinds now we're playing one 150 big blinds deep we can open for something like two and a half I defend 9-8 it checks back the flop I bet the turn as a bluff Sorry, I've had to pause the video a few seconds. So, <coughs> 10 3, okay. Queen 6 suited, perfect hand to 3 bet as a bluff in order to polarize um, our 3 bet range. We've talked about that during the the second part of the video of, video, of the video because yeah my my first mistake was not to change my open sizing but my second mistake was not to three bet enough I only three bet him before the flop something like seven <coughs> percent and it's not enough. If you want to get paid when you've got aces and kings, you also have to three bet sometimes queen six suited or four three suited hands like that. I defend ace ace eight versus an open min raise. It's it's standard. <coughs> 
Yeah, please give me hands. That's what I write here because I'm a bit corded. I've been corded during the the last ten minutes. So when you when you've got no no good cards when you're carded, you have to fight your opponent with your frequencies. Here, um, I hit trips on turn. Maybe he's got nothing, but there are draws, so I check raise him. I hope he's gonna call me with a six or uh, well, maybe he's got a weak turn. He could have checked back on the flop. And if he's got seven with my kicker king, my king kicker, I, I guess I'm ahead. Queen nine, queen nine, I, I might have three at it. It's queen nine of suit is a bit weak to defend by calling preflop, but <coughs> you can three bet with it. You got a queen. The nine is. You can make straights, things like that. Aces. Come on, all in. No, joke. I three bet he falls. Uh, I didn't three bet enough. So that's my fault. If I don't get paid with my aces, it's because I didn't three bet him enough. And so I threw it 5-3 suited because I want to polarize <laughs> my range. I want to increase my 3-bet stat stats. I want to make him feel like I want to outplay him too much before the flop and I want to make him feel suspicious about my 3-bets so that he calls when I've got good hands. and. Even if he calls when I've got 5-3 suited or a bad hand like that, I think I'm good enough to win big pots against him, outplay him or value betting him when I've got when I hit something. Here I've got nine the defense, it check raise on this flop, eight seven three. Mm, no need to <coughs> On this spot, on this flop, mm, very often we're gonna have the the best hand for sure. We've got um, an over an over pair, which is not a big over pair. It's not aces, but we've got an over pair. And on this flop, I mean, I I think our hand has almost the same shot and value as aces because I don't think he would play. Tens and tens and, and jacks and queens and kings or aces like this. So here he can have nothing because we've seen him check raising with nothing on previous flops, um, during previous hands in the second part of the video. Um, but he could also have a draw like six five or or. 10-9 even if we've got a 9 so it's so there's not a lot of probability that he's got a 9, him, a nine himself but he could have jack 10 and try to check raise or he could have a, a hand that beat us something like two pairs 8-7 because I don't think he defends 8-3 or 7-3 so if he's got two pair it's probably 8-7 and he could have a set, set of threes, set of sevens, set of eights, maybe. Even though, well, this player three bets before the flop a lot. We've said it earlier, so I think he would have three bets, something like eights. And yeah, we we've seen him during the first part of the video. We've seen him mm, three bets and shove sevens, a pair of sevens. So he doesn't represent much, but 
I think it's no need to to forbet him right now because uh, if he shoves, black. If he shoves, it's not a great spot. I think it's better to to play him on the turn in position. It's a soft a soft spot. So I call and it's not the it's not the bad card but it's it's not the the best card. <coughs> if he's got uh, but it's gonna be interesting to see what he's doing. And he checks, so I think his hand is weak. Maybe maybe he's got a draw now. Maybe he's got six five. And I hope he calls. And maybe he's got nothing and he check fold very very quickly, so I guess he had nothing. I three bet with my king three. Here I three bet because I think he, he feels bad. It's not I don't three bet because of my cards. I three bet because of the of the meta game. I three bet because I've been three betting uh, not a lot, but um, many times during the last um, ten ten hands during the the <coughs> the last ten times that I was in this position, I was with the big blind, and so that's making pressure. That makes pressure on him, and I've just won a pot against him when we when he check raised me and well I won uh, a little pot and I want to to continue pressuring him because as as we said when we started this video the third part um, our goal now is to to take him to the tilt zone and of course with my king three if I had hit a king for example or something I would have played it very cautiously. I don't want to go all in with my king if I eat something. If I eat only a king, only one pair. Now I've got queens and he three bets me. That's great. That's what I was looking for. So now the question is how to um, how to provoke his shove. How how to to go all in with a hand. Um, a queen is is a bit weak to only call when you're playing here. We're we're playing something like uh, one hundred and and fifteen blinds, one one hundred and twenty blinds before the flop. So um, it's yeah, queens are you know if. An ace or a king comes, and that will happen. Something like I don't want to say to say something wrong, but I think this happens something like one third of the time. You've got either an ace or a king, uh, and yeah, uh, uh, you don't know. You don't know what to what to do when this happens. So. No, I, I I want to I want to forbid him here, and I want him to shove his his under pairs, in pairs like sevens, tens, as I said earlier. He had three bet with sevens, so I forbid him something like two and a half times his three bet amount. And if I bet, which well maybe it's a bluff, but most of the time it's gonna be strong, but he could do that with maybe ace king with jacks um, with rags. So I six bet. <laughs> I still hope he shoves, but of course I still hope he shoves. That's why I I six bet him. And I call, but unfortunately. He had kings this time, and that's exactly the kind of accident that could have helped helped him to to come back 
in this game. That's very unfortunate because we've been dominating him a lot. And yeah, that's the only way he, he could come back. So yeah, as I put it here, I'm unhappy, but well, that's poker, that's the game. And we're gonna continue because we still think we've got a big age against him. And yeah, I think we're, we're gonna try to fight that opponent again. So it's Jack, we open, we've got top air, top kicker on this very dry board, well, dry, on this Jack 3-2 board. And he check raises, so we call, he can check raise with anything. He could check raise with a Jack, he could check raise with a draw. Ace-5, Ace-4, hearts. There are lots of draws, maybe he check raises for value with King-Jack, Queen-Jack. Jack X, like Jack 10. Now I could, uh, I could call. Well, first I I, I might have um, forbid him on the flop for value with my top uh, top kicker, so that he calls me calls me with his draws and um, and King Jacks and. Queen Jack, well, his we his weaker jacks, but he could also have um, five bet, and I would have been in a bad shape. I mean, I I can't go all in uh, with my top bet top kicker. Maybe he's got a set of twos, a set of threes, and then I'm completely dead. Even if he's got draw something like and. A6 of hearts, it's 50 50. I, I only have 50 percent to 50 percent showdown equity. Uh, against this type of opponent, I don't need to take so many risks and I don't have to, to opt for the, the risky line. I mean, I'm, I'm better than him, so. I prefer to to play the the hand in position. It's the exactly the same mm, thought process as uh, when we had the nines on the eight seven um, three board earlier. So I called, and on the bet he, he bets. Now I don't want to let him eat his um, his outs if he's on a draw. Because uh, now a hand, even a hand like eight, nine of hearts, if a, if a ten falls, what are we doing? If he's got seven x of hearts, like seven eight, he's gonna call if I raise him. So yeah, I want to raise him right now, and of course I will, I will fold if he if he shoves. Uh, but it's too risky to only call now and 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 yeah there there would be many rivers many river cards uh, um, maybe I would not know not what to do even if I would probably call his bet so I raise him in order to protect my hand I raise 196, which is a very little raise, and yeah, the plan is to fold if he shoves, I think. I, I would have had to think about it, but I think I would have folded, but he folds pretty quickly. Always good to win a big pot after losing another big one. Here again, we got Queen Jack, top pair second kicker, and it check raises me. It's almost the same spot, 
well, I mean, yeah, it's the same spot. So, everything I've said with my top pet top kicker applies here, it's the same. Uh, it's a, a dry board in the sense that there's only one jack and two rags. He could have a set of fours, a set of twos, he could have the draw, yeah, exactly the same board. So I call and I hit top two pair now, but, but, the, the third hard card has come, so I'm gonna play this hand cautiously. And he bets, but he bets small, I mean, He's only betting 62 in a 104 euros pot. So his line looks cautious too. Uh, uh, I said I would play that cautiously, but uh, uh, I think he's playing it cautiously too. If he had a, if he had a flush, I would expect him to bet something like mm, at least 75 euros which would mean three quarters of the pot that would be that would be the standard bet size and uh, yeah it's very strange this bet maybe he's got a good hand but is is scared by by the the flush now this could be the case if he had a set of fours set of twos Uses. Maybe, yeah, if he's got King Jack, mm, same end as mine, but. So here, well, no need to, to raise him. Maybe he's got nothing. We, we Once again, we can't uh, eliminate this possibility because he, he has shown us that he can check raise with nothing. Maybe he's only having a King right now, so. He could have check raised us with nothing on the flop. Uh, yeah, he, he, he's a um, he's some kind of check raise happy opponent because he, uh, we we have to remember that during the second part of the video, he he had check raised us also with bottom pair. So he can, he can his check raise doesn't mean much. Uh, now we're gonna play that cautiously and just call and reevaluate the river. And of course the river helps us a lot because now we've got the nuts. So the nuts, for those who don't know what it is, um, the nuts means that we've got the best hand. On such a board, king, king, jack, four, deuce. Uh, there's no hand, no holding that would make uh, a stronger hand than holes. We've got the full kings, jacks. Uh, so that's the definition of the nuts. And now we want to go all in. <laughs> and yeah, for sure. Even yeah, if he's if he had a set of fours, a set of deuces, uh, now he's got a full house and. Or full house is stronger than his one. Uh, he bets, it's a little bit, he bets 106 euros, which is under, under half pot. Well, almost half pot, but it's, it's a small bet, so I guess he's, he's having something, even if we, we, we saw him hmm, bluff with this kind of bet size uh, most of all during the, the first part of the video he, he bluffed for with half pot, half pot bet sizes but now uh, I don't know I really hope he's having something so yeah of course we have to raise him and now the question is to I expect him to to have well in in the best case i expect him to have uh, a medium strength hand because with a with a a very strong hand i think that he, he would have bet mm, 
much more. His bed size would have been something like 180, 170 if he had the full house himself, uh, even a, a small full house. Um, if he had the flush, I, I think he would have used the same kind of amount. So now I guess he's having a jack or maybe a king but yeah a lucky king he, if he had check raised us with I don't know king five yeah, any any random card with a king um, and he would only bet 100 because he would want us to to call him but he, he still would be mm, scared by the the flush yeah so now we we have to to find out the the right amount to raise him and but we we don't want him to fold and we want him yeah to call if he's having a medium strength hand and we go all in which would be our, our goal because we we've got the nuts i'm afraid he folds with the with a medium strength hand uh i mean if we raise now we we represent a lot of strength. Uh, so I think we have to go for a medium size raise. He bet 106 euros. Yeah, so we raised 300 something. 370 euros, which we which means that he only has to pay 270 euros uh, to win a pot that would make right now 700 euros 707 euros so he's having almost uh, yeah almost a two and a half to one odds so yeah, I expect him to call with his medium strength hands. And he thinks about it. Please shove. Yeah, that's also something interesting. Uh, this bet size is still having, even if he calls all bet, uh, so if he calls 270 more, he's still having 300 behind. And he could, uh, if if he's bluffing, or well, if he's bluffing, he could he could think, well, maybe I still have some fold equity, and I could re-raise all in now to represent a full house. Basically, to represent the 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 hand we've got ourselves, the nuts. Or even a full house uh, if he had fours or deuces. I think he, he, he might be tempted to do so if he's on the bluff. Uh, if he's having a strong hand like sort of the, the full houses, even the little full houses, he might be tempted to do so too, thinking that we are raising for value with our flush, but we, we will fold against against the shove uh, so yeah I think the, the bet size here is pretty cool and he can't call us with his medium strength hands which is what he is representing so he thinks about it and the more he thinks about it the more I think he's gonna fall but finally he calls and he had queen jack he had queen jack queen jack no draws So, well, what can we say about his play? First, on the flop, hmm, when you're playing 200 big blinds deep, which is more or less well, what the situation was, uh, it's it's not very it's not very standard to check raise with a, a medium top pair. Uh, 
on the draw board because you you can expect versus a, a good opponent you can expect to face a difficult situation later on turn or or river uh, but he did it he carried on the turn he bet for value but I mean with what kind of hand would I would I call him I don't know what what did he what did he expect I think uh, I think he's bet on the turn yeah I, I think he bet for protection but the, the flush had come and uh, I, I, I don't know with what with what hand that he beats could I call him? Now the river, so he bet the turn, which I think is a first mistake. Now on the river, he carries on, he continues with a thin value betting. He thinks his hand is still good and he wants to value bet thin. Uh, I mean, why not in some cases? But as we as we said earlier on the turn, I think he should have opted for a check call line if he thought his hand was good. But now, most of all, on on the river, it's a big mistake. I mean, check call was an option. Uh, I guess a better option than a bet. And most of all, he he could not uh, he could not call my raise. If I raise him on the river, I think is is beat is beat eighty five percent of the time, ninety percent of the time. We have not shown him crazy thing during the match, so he should give us uh, more credit. We, we we made a big big bluff a big big river bluff uh, during one of the first hand of the first video but he didn't see it because he didn't call us he folded on the on the river and yeah so he he, he has not seen us uh, bluffing him a lot so he should give us more credit and calling us at the river is, is is a very very bad call. I think he's very very bad call. If you've got, if if you want to to comment this hand specifically, uh, please give your give your thoughts uh, on my website, uh, which is by the way, poker iPhone coach dot net. There's there's a thread. There's a forum thread about the videos and yeah I I really think that most of the time his call his river call is very bad. B bad calling the river is bad. Check calling why not? Bad folding bad folding why not? If he thinks I'm a calling station and if he thinks he's got the best hand uh yeah then bad fold. You bet and if I raise you fold that's a bad fold. But bet calling is bad. Yeah, wow, Queen Jack, as I wrote, I was very impressed, very surprised to see he would bet call with Queen Jack on such a board. Yeah, now I think he's tilted. Our goal was to take him to the tilt zone and yeah I think he just <laughs> he just arrived in the tilt zone and yeah he quit it so that's it um, well uh, as I just said so yeah in conclusion we've um, played against this opponent during one hour, one hour and a half, a little less. Uh, 
Uh, I think we won because uh, we didn't reload and yeah, so we made something like 1000 euros. Uh, this opponent was a professional poker player, he's a regular player. Um, yeah, we, we, we've saw a lot of leaks in this game. Uh, if you've got any comments, any thoughts on the video, as I said, poker-coach.net, feel free to post. You can contact me there, and if you're interested by the coaching formulas, then uh, yes, you you can find uh, all the all the information there, the rates, uh, how it works, how we do that, etc. Some uh, students' feedback uh, from some of my former students. So yeah, well, I hope you enjoyed these three videos. I'm probably going to post other ones soon. Um, you can use my website to let me know what kind of videos you would like to watch. Uh, Short-ended, heads up, what kind of um, what kind of level uh, I play from from most of the time from four hundred dollars tables to well, I used to play ten thousand dollars tables but there are less and less tables like this so yeah let me know enjoy your poker tables and have fun bye